Welcome to Attainable Green. I'm Jess, and today we're going to be talking about my rescue phalaenopsis. So the last update was about six months ago um, about these plants. So today we're going to see how they're doing now. So to give some background, I got about 30 plants from my aunt who could no longer take care of her orchids. These phalaenopsis were definitely neglected. Um, they had mealybugs, they had some secondary infections like bacterial rot or stem rot or crown rot. So I took upon the task of taking care of these plants and seeing what uh, can be saved and what could not. Currently, I have about half of the plants from the original set. Um, the other half just didn't make it. With the plants that I had mentioned in a previous video that said that they didn't have any roots and I was trying to encourage these plants to grow roots, um, they didn't make it as well because snails attacked during the winter season and basically ate a huge portion of the leaves and the roots. So those plants were also no longer viable. So even though I tried to save a plant with no roots, um, I was thwarted by the snails and that was something I didn't anticipate. Um, so I know for next time, if I'm going to try to save a plant, um, I, it probably would be best to keep them away from pests. So there are three plants that are currently in spike. Uh, the first one is beta, which is the cakey off of the mother plant that I had a while back. Uh, the mother plant just didn't make it. It just sent all of its energy to this baby plant and also started a flower spike. So I'm deciding to um, let the spike go, uh, have it flower just so I know what the color of the flowers are. And then we're going to cut that spike and let it focus on growing roots. Now this cakey had a very vigorous uh, root system. So it's totally okay as it is. Um, and it's definitely its own plant. The other two plants that are in spike, um, they're doing okay, um, but as you can see, the leaves don't look in the best condition and it's not perfect. I'm still dealing with mealybugs on these ones, so I'm not going to keep these flowers for very long because um, the mealybugs are definitely attracted to them and so I'm going to wait till I see the color of the flowers as well and then I'm going to cut back these spikes to just let them grow on. I really want to get rid of the mealybugs before I do anything else because I don't want to let the mealybugs proliferate into the rest of my collection. So all of these plants are in quarantine until I can get a hold on the uh, mealybug situation. All these plants are in a small bark mix and uh, they are on a west facing window. So I'm trying to give it as much light as I can during the uh, winter season. I'm probably going to back off the light a little bit during the um, spring to summer season um, just so that the leaves don't get too burned. Before the winter season, I was slowly repotting uh, a lot of these plants. And as I repotted them in sets, I kept them together in individual sets. So I have a group of three that are placed in a northern window. And I'm just hoping that these ones will um, recover and then um, they will spike maybe next year. One of them has a basil cakey that's almost the same size as a mother plant. And it's slowly starting to um, grow its own root system. Uh, the other plant, it's doing okay, but um, it's kind of having a twisted leaf effect. So I don't know if that's a residual from uh, the mealybugs attacking this plant, um, but overall these plants are pretty clean. So I don't have to worry about mealybugs. I just need them to establish roots and grow new leaves. The last of this set is probably the one that is in the worst health. The lower leaves of this plant were really floppy, really dehydrated. Eventually I think that leaf will fall off, but in the meantime, it's just gonna look the way it does. There's just no way to remedy that. Um, the newer leaves are smaller, but I think it's gonna recover its strength and it just needs to uh, keep on going. Uh, I have one more keiki from the mother plant. Uh, this is alpha. Um, this one is a much smaller keiki than uh, beta. So this plant, uh, I'm just hoping will establish its roots. It has some roots, but not enough that I feel like it's a very strong plant. So I'm kind of babying this one a little bit. Since I have so many plants, um, I'm doing a little bit of an experiment on some of them. And uh, for this particular plant, um, I have it in a kind of kokodama setup. Uh, it has a core of sphagnum moss and then sphagnum moss around it. The outer layer of this plant is in kind of preserved moss, although the color of it has faded with the amount of times that I've watered this plant. Um, so far it's doing okay. It's slowly starting to put out roots now. Uh, we'll see if this is a viable setup for my location because I think it looks uh, really nice and I don't really have to use a pot for it. I can just use a stand. I put a stake in the front of the plant right now just to keep it stabilized and to keep it from toppling over. Uh, right now it has a lot of leaves and not a lot of roots. So uh, I'm hoping that there will be enough root mass um, to provide enough weight for the plant. 
Also, um, there were three Phalaenopsis that I wasn't able to repot in time before the winter season, so they are outside. They've been outside this entire time from late summer to um, early spring. And um, I would have to say that these are probably the worst looking of all of the rescue fowls that I have. Um, the leaves are just looking pretty battered. Uh, they still have mealy bugs on them. They still have a lot of issues to deal with, but they're still alive. So I'm hoping that once the weather warms up, I'll be able to repot them, clean them up, and uh, deal with mealybugs and give them a fresh start. They have a lot of pitting on the leaves and I think that's uh, wildfire damage um, where the ashes fell on the leaves and uh, because they were still warm, it kind of caused these little burn marks or singed marks onto the leaves itself. Um, it's not serious, but um, it just makes it a little bit unsightly. That's kind of what I'm working with right now for these outdoor plants. They have been definitely take a beating. Orchids are really hardy plants and I feel like uh, we often think that they're really fragile but uh, having these fowls outside during the winter time has kind of made me realize that they are a lot stronger than we think. They can handle a lot uh, cooler temperatures and even though they don't look great and it's not ideal for them, um, they are still able to make it. Uh, I'm hoping that when the weather gets better and I'm able to take care of them better and repot them, um, we'll give them a chance to grow and show off its potential. So that is an overview of my rescue phalaenopsis. I am not an expert at taking care of plants. I'm not even an expert at rescuing plants. I definitely lost a lot of plants in this process. Uh, and I think that's all part of learning to grow something. You're gonna have some deaths and some of them are gonna be out of your hands. Um, I did the best I could and I'm still working on that. I still could lose a lot of these plants, um, but I think I'm learning a lot about how strong and resilient some of these plants are and realize at which point some plants are just too far gone to save and which point they are still able to uh, be saved. Uh, that is a point that's different for everyone depending on the level of grower you are or how much time you can devote to this. And so far I'm really learning a lot about uh, growing orchids and uh, I hope you enjoyed learning from my mistakes or if you wanna see more about these rescue fowls, please click on the playlist and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.